Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching me today. I'm Linda, Dr. Linda Kramer and today I am honoured to be here with the amazing Billy Stanley who has had one of the most amazing near-death experiences that I have heard of because during his journey into that unknown realm of heaven, he actually met his stepbrother who was Elvis Presley. So thank you so much for being here today, Billy. Thank you for having me, Linda. Oh, it's an honor. You know, I'm so, I actually feel like that little girl in the audience thinking, I'm here with Billy today. Because, <laughs> you know, I've watched your videos, I've seen your story and your journey of what you've been through growing up and, you know, with um, being associated to a certain famous person. But, yeah. you know, the amazing work that you're now doing with regards to your faith and whether we call it religion or spiritualism, I'm sure that we can all agree that it's that trust and faith of something that we cannot see in our three-dimensional world that exactly. is what piques my interest in wanting to talk to you so much today about what you've personally been through as well. So thank okay. you so much for being here today, Billy. Okay. So let's start at the beginning. Off air, you were just telling me a little story about how you felt that you couldn't really talk about it for a while after you had your NDE. So how yes. did that all happen for you? Well, uh, let's just let's just go to that day, which was May 19th, 2018. It was just like any other day. I, you know, uh, I ran some errands and I said, you know, I felt like, you know, I wanted to sit on, sit on the couch and watch a little movie. And then all of a sudden I got sleepy. I don't remember uh, that what happened to me i mean you know they my brother and everybody else told me what happened to me when uh the next thing because i was just sitting there and i kind of dozed off next thing i know i'm standing uh like as most people have probably been on airplanes and stuff and look down and see the clouds below them and that's what it kind of looked like to me and i i, I was looking down I mean, well, the first thing I got to say is I, the first thing that hit me was this overwhelming sense of love like you've never felt before in your life. It just it's so overwhelming. It just it it fills you. You you become full of love. And, you know, I, I started looking around because it was very bright, but I couldn't see a light source like we see a sun when we look around. So I was looking around and going, wow. And then I looked down at my feet to see if I could take a step on it. And I took a small step and I went, okay, yeah, I, I can walk. And then I looked back up and then I started looking around and all I saw, I've never seen that many people before in my whole life. Can I, been, can I just stop you for a moment? Sure. When you were yeah. looking down at your feet, could you see your feet at that point? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they were covered. It, it was, I wouldn't call them like shoes, but they, they was white. Because I kind of took my put my foot slowly forward and I was watching it, and then I could see I could stand on it because, like I said, it kind of looked like clouds. Wow, and I wanted to make sure I could walk on it. Yeah, that's interesting. Together. That is interesting because you know, so like my NDE that I had, I didn't have feet for a lot of it, so it's interesting right. that at that, that, that point you actually did have your feet, um, oh, yeah. that you could right. physically I, see. Yes. Yeah, I, I can see my whole body. Well, I mean, it was just look, like looking down like I do today. You know, if yeah. you look down, you see, you know, of course, I didn't see my stomach like I do now. It was kind of flat. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, think, okay, I before we progress, what clothes were you wearing at that time? It was all white. Everybody was wearing all white. Wow. I mean, when I look back up, after I saw that, you know, you know, was looking for the light source, I couldn't find it, and then... As I saw that I could step, I took one small step forward and I stopped. And then I, I started looking around and I saw all these people, all different skin colors and all different hair colors, but I couldn't make out their faces. I mean, the biggest thing was, to me was, wow, I've never seen this many people before in my whole life. And I've been to some of the big rock concerts and I've seen pictures of like Woodstock and stuff. There was more people up there than that. Yet everywhere I looked, all all beside me and forward. That's all I could see was people. It was crowded. And I mean, I was going, wow, there's a lot of people here. And so I saw, kind of looked off to the right and there was a city 
it looked like a city. It just had a golden hue to it. That's all I, you know, I couldn't make out the buildings or anything, but I could just see that, that, that shine of the gold. And someone said, that's where you got to go. So that's when I started walking. Okay. And so I, another question. Sure. Someone said that you had to go over towards the city. Did you hear them like we do here on earth with like ears or was it telepathic at that point? It was telepathic. Said that's where you got to go. Yep. So please continue. What happened after that? So as I was walking, the first thing I know, the, as I was walking, the first thing was there was no sense of time at all. I mean, I didn't care about time. I mean, I, I, there was no concerns or worry or anxiety or any of that. It was all just very uplifting, very positive feeling that I felt this whole time. I mean, I never felt this good before when I was on earth. And I was just, mm -hmm. wow. I, I mean, I didn't really know, still didn't know where I was. I was just kind of walking. And like I said, that overwhelming sense of love just kept going, surging through me. And I was just, I was the happiest I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, as I was walking, I kept, I was looking at the people just going back and forth and just, I, I, you know, like I said, I couldn't really, it was like driving down the street where you see people, uh, they're off in a distance, but you can't make out their faces. So, and that's the way they look. And they was all wearing white. Wow. Everybody had on white. And that's how I could see their skin color. I mean, I could see their hands. I see, I see their faces and their hair color. So I saw all the different skin tones that you could think of and all the hair colors you can think of. And I was just going, well, this is this is great. And then shortly, there was a figure standing in front of me. Uh -huh. And they had their back to me. And I walked up. And when I, when I walked up, they turned around and it was Elvis. And I just. And now the thing, the great thing about my experience, and which I've heard some other people's, up there, you don't have to speak with your mouth. They can hear what you're thinking. Because he said, it's great to see you, Billy. And his mouth didn't move at all. And I was, wow, Elvis. And he reached forward and gave me a hug, and I, I hugged him back. Wow. So, and, okay, some questions. I've got 10,000 questions right now. First yeah. off, was when you saw and you obviously recognized that it was Elvis because you're his stepbrother, you grew up with him. Did he, did he appear as the others there as that white as well yes okay he had on all, all white but he looked like he was 25 years old when i first met him that was one That's of the questions funny. yep so so we can go to any age that we like when we're there you know because obviously elvis wasn't 25 when he passed over but you know. he looked that to you when you were there with yeah. him Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't feel like I had a choice on what he looked like. It was just, that's the person I was that, seeing in front of. That's him. right. And, and when like, when he hugged you, did you actually see arms come around you? Yes. He reached out just like he did when he was here on Earth. Reached wow. out to you know, give me a hug. And so I stepped to him and he put his hand on my back, patted it, and I patted and him on the back. Did you feel that when he actually yeah. touched you on the back? You actually felt yeah. that? Wow, how amazing is that, that you yeah. could have that sensation whilst up there in heaven or out there in heaven. So keep going with your story, Billy. I'm, I'm eager to hear more. I was, I was just about to ask him something, and then that's when it started to get, everything started getting dark, like the old cartoons, you know, how they used to close out, it, it like, they come to a circle and it was I was looking at his face and I was starting to get a little bit afraid he said don't be afraid you know that's when he said tell my fam uh, tell my uh, family friends and fans I love them I'll see them when they get here I, wow. I guess that's when I was leaving and because I, I was looking I, I was looking and it was in closing on his face and then that's when I heard another voice that said no doubt no fear now, wow. the great thing about it, when God talks to you, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to explain anything. You get it right away. No doubt there is a heaven and no fear. This is where you're going to be. And that was it. And I and mean, when that's you, when I came to yep. when you heard the, those words, was yeah. that telepathic? 
Yeah, or was it like I mean, someone can, standing I behind you? Him, I could sense him to the right, but it was God. I can't look at God with my eyes. Yeah. You know, it's something you, you, you can't do. So yeah. I didn't look. I could, I could sense him right there in his presence. And I heard the, the words in, in a very commanding voice, no doubt, no fear. Wow. And that's when I heard that. He didn't have to explain. I got, I got it immediately. I mean, the thing that a lot of humans like to do is try to make it more complicated than it really is <laughs> about heaven and all that. It's simple. It's very, very simple. Yeah. And I mean, that's the way God knows that we're simple human beings. And that's why he treats us the way he does. Very simply. Uh -huh. And that's it. And so, yeah. you know, I came to and I was laying on the floor and I, my, my wife said when I came to, I was laughing. You know, and I was, I, what are y'all doing? And they told me what happened. You know, I just, I went into convulsions and I planked and then I just, I was dead for 10 minutes. Wow. You know, uh, my, my daughter uh, was giving me uh, CPR. And I was, I was going to get up and they said, no, you can't get up. The paramedics are on the way upstairs. I said, what do you mean? What, what are you talking about? And they said, Billy, you were dead. I said, I wasn't dead. You know, I just, you know. So it wasn't until I got to the hospital and then they, they put a stent in my heart. And the doctor said, you're, it's, you're a walking miracle. I said, what do you mean? They said, most people don't survive what you did. You suffered a heart attack, stroke, and seizure. You had all three at one time. Wow. And I just, so, you know, I, while I was laying in the bed, you know, I, my wife was there with me and I wanted to tell her what I experienced, but I, I couldn't. I mean, it was just something in me that said, I can't do this. I can't tell anybody about this. I don't know what to do with it. So I, I prayed for about a month or maybe two, two and a half months asking God, what, what do I do with this? What do I do with this information that I just got? And it was two and a half months later, I was, I was uh, woken up about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And that same voice said, you're supposed to share it with everybody, Billy. That's why you came back. And I, okay, so how do I do that? So one thing led to another. And, and I, I told my wife and my brother first, David, and, you know, they said, yeah, Billy, you have to share this with everybody. And so it works out. I, I got a book, you know called The Faith of Elvis, and that's where I shared this whole experience with mm -hmm. you. And I'm more than happy to promote that for you today as well, Billy. Thank you so much for, for mentioning that. Um, so when you think about sharing what you went through, right. what's the message that you think is most important that people need to hear from what happened to you? Don't be afraid of death. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to a far, far better place. <laughs> yes. I mean, that, words cannot describe how great. I mean, <laughs> the I mean, the feelings and everything else that you have up there are so heightened. I mean, you, you know, like I said, that overwhelming sense of love is so powerful. It, I mean, it almost brings tears to my eyes because I'm I missed it. You know, I miss that because I've never felt that way before, and yeah. it was like the most. It was the greatest experience that ever happened to me. And I thank God for God every day. Thank you, God, for letting me see just a small little taste of, it, you know, what it's really like. And, you know, yeah. I, I wanted to share this with people, you know, especially those that, that have lost loved ones and stuff, you know, let them know that, you know, that, that's not the end. Just look at it like they've gone to sleep because you will see them again, you know, and, you know, they're waiting for you. I mean, oh, yes. He told me to tell everybody he's waiting for him to get there. You know, he's going to welcome me. all, you know, those that, that love him. I'm sure he was there with Lisa for Lisa. That gets me a little bit. But, um, it does. Mm -hmm. And it does. And I'm glad that I see that, that you get emotional with this, Billy, because, you know, we're all only humans and we've right. all got this. It's like we're just DNA blobs of jelly and we want to believe in something that we can't see. So it's right. only when people share what they've seen. And, right. you know, I thoroughly believe everything that you've said because it, it resonates so much with what I personally went through with my own NDE. And, yeah. you know, 
one thing that I do want to ask you yeah. is these people that you saw up there, whether right. you know, all these hundreds and hundreds of people that you saw, do you think thousands, thousands, thousands <laughs> do you think that they knew you were going to be there before you arrived? Was it like they were awaiting you? Or was it just that you turned up where they were anyway? Well, they weren't, like I said, I mean, they weren't that close. I mean, it was like if, if I started walking toward them, it seemed like if they, as I was walking toward the city, they, it, and they were some kind of like out in front of me, but as I took, they, they kind of moved to the side. They weren't, they weren't getting close to me. Yeah. I, and I, I, get, I yeah. understand that because of, I had the similar thing where they weren't coming near me either. Right. So let's now go over to the city. How close did you get to the city? I was about halfway there. And what? As I was getting closer, I could tell that it was a city. It had a wall and it had, I mean, the tops of the buildings looked like they were gold. Yeah. Did you see yeah. roads there? It, there? There was this path that I was walking on, but I didn't see any other paths going anywhere else. It was just that one path going there. And it was a straight one. It wasn't a curvy one. It was just straight. Yep. And what did it look like? It was, okay, like I talked about the clouds, but this was just, it looked like kind of almost like white concrete. Yeah. Just to and give it, people an was, idea, yeah, of what, was, what you saw. Like the clouds were about this thick along the path. It looked like it had been trimmed, and it was, that's how I was walking. Wow. So, yeah. I like how you explained that. Thank you so much. So, okay, so let's just now talk about what you think that you've learned since that experience, Billy. Anything that you want to share with how we survive, what we go through in life, our fears? Any words well, of wisdom that you'd like to talk about? Well, the, the only ones I can think, only words of wisdom I got was, you know, from God himself, you know, no doubt, no fear. And so I think that's the message that I would like to pass on to other people. Don't have any doubt in your life about this. It is real. It Heaven is real. It's there, you know. And, you know, most people think, well, it's what you do to get there. No, it's what you believe that gets you there. As long as you believe, that's what you'll get there. I mean, but you have to believe it with all your heart and soul. Yeah. And I, I always have, you know, I mean, as, I was I was kind of what I call a Christian realist. I was one of those that I believe it because it says so, but I would sure like to have some proof. <laughs> <laughs> I think God may have said, okay, here's your proof, Billy. How about that? Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think... Anybody that's ever had this, it's our job to talk to people, especially the, those that have loved ones that have passed on or, you know, people that may have loved ones in the hospital and going, you know, their time is near. Yes. You should be, you know, yeah, you're going to miss them, but rejoice in where they're going to go. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we look at the last two years of what humanity has been through this pandemic right. and there are a lot of more people now who are trusting, hoping and believing in right. something that we can no longer, you know, what we can't see. So right. um, I want to just share, I did share it with you off screen. Okay. Um, one of my favourite Elvis Presley songs ever, because it's so inspirational, it's a song called If I Can Dream. And it is funny how, you know, you mentioned the clouds. So if you like, I've just got a few lines here that I'd like to share as inspiration. Please do. And in this song it says, it's called If I Can Dream, and it says we're lost in a cloud with too much rain. We're, we've been trapped in a world that's troubled with pain. But as long as a man has the strength to dream, he can redeem his soul and fly. You know, I I get the goosebumps, Billy, when I hear people doing extra good work, those extra brownie points that we can earn. And 
I thoroughly believe that with your experience, you know, we look at Elvis's legacy and, yeah. you know, we all know the words Graceland. We all know the words Memphis because of the association to him. And right. now that you're still carrying on as like a pilgrimage for him, I I think this is absolutely amazing because I know how um, religious and how much faith Elvis had. Right. And, you know, it, it is just representative in his words of his songs that he sang about. And, you right. know, now that you've had this experience also, I feel it is so inspirational, especially now after this pandemic, where so many people have lost that hope, where, you know, straight from the words, which we've been trapped in a world where that's troubled with pain. We right. need people like you to come out now and say, I got told I had to share my story and here it is. And right. believe me, you know, you're a number one bestseller author and you don't need to go this avenue now with your own NDE. So there's nothing for you in it, if you know what I mean, you know. Right. So you are doing this out of the goodness of your own heart, the trust that you've received when you went to heaven and also right. the messages that you got called there by God. You know, right. how many of us can literally say we have been in the presence of God and we heard his voice? Right. So I am thoroughly, thoroughly excited to have had you today, Billy. You know, so I'm going to turn it back over to you for any other inspiration. One of the, one of the things that I think that, that really get com people confused and stuff, especially when they say, well, you know, some people have experienced the opposite of, you know, heaven and they, they experienced hell and that, that changed, they changed their ways. You know, I've, I've, like I said, I've always been a Christian, but one of the things as a believer or as a Christian, a lot of us puts, puts this on our, our self that, you know, we have to be perfect. Well, no, we don't. Jesus was perfect and he came in, died for us so we could all reach that obtainable dream right there to go to heaven. I was not perfect by no means, mm -hmm. but I was there. I mean, you know, that, that's, that shows the grace of God right there. Oh. You know? All you have to do is believe. It's that simple. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in, you know, well, which one should I believe or this and this? All you have to do is look, pick up the Bible and believe that right there. That right there will get yeah. you there. Yeah. And that's it. It's that simple. We don't have to, I mean, a lot of people like to make it so complicated. I don't understand why. But, I mean, yeah. God revealed to me it's this simple, Billy. It's this simple. Do you honestly, and, do you think that that's why Elvis called his home Grace Land? No, it was it was called Graceland before Elvis bought the house. Oh, okay. But isn't that yeah. ironic? See so, these I mean, synchronicities? Yeah. It's it's like well, the grace of God was saying buy this property because it's called Grace, well, which there, means so yeah. Yeah. There there's so many things that that's you know as you know when I came back from this you know I looked at you know I always thought well you know Elvis was the king of rock and roll but he never won a Grammy award for any of his rock and roll stuff. He only got th three Grammys, and that was for his gospel music. Yeah. Because people could hear it. I mean, I've had people come up to me and say, Billy, I never really believed in God until I heard Elvis sing the songs. I yeah. Said, Thank you. That's what th you got the message. That's what he was trying to convey. Yes. I mean, even when he was alive, when he was doing a show, you know, he in the middle of the show, how many rock concerts do you ever go to? And all of a sudden, there's two gospel songs in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was sharing his faith with everybody, and that's what he was doing. Now, yeah. now since you know the book come out and everything, everybody said, well, you know, you know, he wasn't the the, the perfect Christian. Well, none of us are. There was only one perfect human, I mean, only one perfect person, and that was Jesus. You know, and I mean, he died so we don't have to be perfect. You know, that's what the message everybody's got to understand is: it's not your deeds that get you there. It's your belief that gets you there. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. That is amazing words right there, that it's what we believe in that gets us there. You know, I... If you believe in it, 
guess what? You st your life changes by itself. It, you don't have to do a lot. It's just it all of a sudden it just starts taking over and you just go, wow, this is a better life because you don't have to worry about death. Anymore. I mean, that's the biggest problem with the world today is we're all afraid of it. Well, most people, I'm not afraid. Are you? You're not afraid of it. No. No, I'm not. No, I, I, no. because I, we've I both like been there. We know what's coming for us. Exactly. Yeah. See, I want to spend some more time here to share this message to don't be afraid. It's nothing to be afraid of. You know, we, now, we, if you don't believe, I, I, mean, I might be a little bit afraid if you don't. <laughs> but if you do, there's nothing to be afraid of. And I mean, for those that have lost loved ones, it's our job to, com you know, comfort them and let them know that, please, you know, yes, they love and miss you. But they are in a far, far greater place right now. Oh yeah. I mean, all they're doing is they're staying around with a happy smile on their face and and filled with so much love and you know and you know they care. They still care about you. So let's just touch on that one because yeah. I know what you're describing here because I felt this as well. But yeah. how would you put it into words when you feel the love of heaven? How does it come out of you? Does it go through you? Does it come out of just your head or all over? Or how it would you put it into being. words? It consumes your whole be being that you even start radiating, just like all the other people you I saw up there. They radiated the love. And it's just so powerful. I mean, it's like the best analogy I can always put, I always try to say is, Remember the first time you ever really fell in love in your whole life? Now magnify that 100 million times. That's what it feels like. That's that overwhelming sense that you, you've, I mean, it's euphoric, the love you feel. I mean, and there was no sense of time. I mean, it only felt like a few seconds that I was there. Because everybody, well, eternity, well, that sounds like a long time. You have no sense of time up there. So you don't worry about that, you know. That's that. That's a great thing because to spend eternity in that in that one that place there, that's our that's our ultimate goal is to be there. So yeah. that, that's that's the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> I I know what you're talking about. Okay, definitely. You know, if it we we must ensure that um, our message is that we all have to wait to get there. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because some people, you know, they think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm over I mean, this world, etc. I can tell anybody, especially those that, you know, that, that contemplate suicide and stuff like that, is life is always going to be tough, but it can get easier if you seek help. And I mean, seek help, talk to somebody, you know, Absolutely. You may, I, mean, I mean, talk to somebody that's had, a, I mean, talk to anybody, because one of the things that, God has revealed to me since I've been back is that a little bit of God lives in everybody in, on earth right now. Uh -huh. and he'll send yeah. somebody that comes up and says something to you and you go, I don't know who this person is, but they just said the right thing I needed to hear. Well, that was God working in your life right there. Absolutely. Yes. And he's trying to let you know, don't give up. Keep going. Fight the fight. Yes. Yes. In the long run, it's worth it all. It's uh -huh. worth it. And so, Absolutely, it is. You know, I, I mean, if, if I can reach out to people and you know and help them in some way, that, I mean, that's my calling. I mean, I feel like that's that's why God brought me back, is to help people that maybe have some doubts or whatever. No, you know, yeah, we all have doubts, but who is the master of confusion? That is the devil. So he's, you know, there's a war going on inside your head all the time. And so just always, if you have doubts or whatever, pick up the Bible or just I gotta. A, a Bible app it gives me a, a scripture every day and I, I read the scripture every day I'm going thank you I needed that right there you know uh -huh. need to think of that. but you know don't give up I mean because life is so much it, I mean you only get one chance in this you know there is no more encores after this so you know you you, you know once you go that's it so make the best of this life that you have right here yeah and I mean and, and how do you do that help other people if, trust me, if you help other people, you forget about your troubles real quick. <laughs> and that's, that's what it's all about, giving. Yeah. I mean, that's what he was, a giver. I mean, he yeah. gave money. He didn't know cars to people he didn't know. I mean, the, the things that he did was, you know, 
unbelievable I mean, with, with the way he was every day. And I mean, I learned that from him. And yeah. then this, he affirmed everything when I had that. I mean, everybody calls it a near death experience. I call it near God experience. Wow. And, and that's I'm powerful thankful. calling it that. I'm, yes. I'm thankful every day for it. Yes. Oh, it is something to be very grateful for. You know, yeah. so for somebody struggling at home right now, and, yeah. you know, because of the way that the world is right now, people are losing their jobs, their, their relationships are breaking down. What sort of words of hope would you give to those ones today that are hope that they think, yeah, it's all right to say go out and be nice to other people, but how do I start that? What would be you nice say to that person? First. Be nice yeah. to yourself first. When you get up in the morning, say good morning to yourself oh, and make it a good morning. Only you, only your world is what you make it. You know, yeah, there's maybe a lot of problems going on around the world and everything like that. Quit focusing on that stuff and think about your own world. What can you do to make it better? And that's what you do. You know, wow. because I mean, that's the first thing I say, to, you know, I, I say a prayer and I, you know, good, good morning, Billy. And I mean it when I say it to myself, good morning, I'm going to make it a good day, you know, yeah. and that's what I do. So that rest of the day, that's what I'm off to do is make it good. What, wow. Can I help somebody? You know, what what can I do to contribute instead of taking stuff from the, the world? Don't take anything from the world. Commu I mean, give to the world. Give yourself. Yeah. Because you are somebody. You mean something to somebody. I mean, we all should mean something. All of it. Uh, you know, we're all humans. We're, you know, we're all brothers and sisters. And we should treat each other that way. Mm -hmm. You know? Quit running and hiding because some you got a problem or something. No, we all have problems. Well, I do. I'll raise yeah. my hand up. I'm putting my hand up too for you, Billy. We all do. You know yep. yeah, we all have them. But that doesn't mean you give up, you know. I yeah. mean, face those problems. I mean, one thing, if God is on your side, there's the, the one thing he does is you, you don't go around the problem. You go through it. That's yeah. it. You don't go around it. No, go through it. And then guess what? It makes you a stronger person when you get on the other side of it, too. Wow. Yeah. Oh, honey, I could talk to you all day. What an inspiration you are. Yeah. You know, you, you've you obviously been such a role model for so many people. You you know, you are so deserving that, of all. No. I'm going to say it, that you are. You really are. Because you touch yep. so many people, you know, where you could have easily gone into the shadows and not come out of those shadows. And you have come out and you are absolutely shining with the experiences that you've been through. And that is so admirable and respectful. You know, um, I can't give you enough raves today, Billy. You know, it is absolutely my honour to be able to, you know, I feel like, as I said at the beginning, I'm just sitting here in the audience and you're the rock star up on the stage today because of what you've been through and where you are now. So how is your life going for you now and what sort of things are you doing now and into the future to bring out what happened to you in um, May 2018? Well, uh, my life, I mean, I was forced into retirement. I was uh, 65 when that happened. I was going to wait and retire when I was around 67. I'm 70 today. So um, my main focus in life is right now is, you know, uh, trying to make others happy. You know, I mean, that, I mean, that's if I can help somebody, I mean, that's what I'm here for. I mean, I, I come back out of this a different person than I was before. In the sense that, I'm, I mean, I was, I've was i always been a positive person, but now I'm even more positive about life, you know, because it, it we're only here for a short time. So we should enjoy it while we're here. And then we're going to really, I mean, because like I said, the payoff is the reward is, you know, where we go to heaven. And so that, you know, helping others is where I'm at right now. I mean, if I can help somebody just talking to them or whatever, you know, I'm, I'd be more than happy to do that. You know, um, I, I, I talk to people on Facebook quite a bit. You know, I mean, uh, you know, any, anything, anywhere I can go to help, you know, I'll be there. You know, yeah, put, count me in, I'll help. <laughs> so, I'm there. You're amazing, Billy, you know. 
So whereabouts are you located these days? And how do people find you if they do want to have a chat with you about anything? Well, uh, let's see. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. So um, and, uh, I'm on Facebook, you know, Billy Stanley. Uh, just look for me. And, and I've got a couple of pages. One of the things I do is, I don't know if you can see that, it says Hound Dog Racing. Uh-huh. It's a, it's, I do that online. It's online racing. Uh, I've got a, a sponsor that, you know, here in Memphis, performance distributors. You know, and so I'm a professional sim racer right now. Yeah. So, and I get to meet a lot of guys through that. And it, it's always amazing when they, when I'm racing with them, because a lot of these guys, you'll hear them cussing and all this, but they don't hear me cuss at all. I'm just dead gummit or dang or something like that's it for me. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and they laugh and then they find out. I go, oh, well, yeah, well, tell me, tell me what happened. Cause I got a little cross on my car and they see it. And, yeah. you know, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Christian. You know, I mean, a lot of people will hide that's from right. that. I'm not, I, I, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I, I'm over here. Count me. Because trust yeah. me, you, brother, you want to be counted here because when you go, if you're not on his side here, he's not going to be on your side over there either. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you, you better get right. <laughs> wow. So how can people find you through your hound dog racing? Is there a website well, or anything it, for that? Well, it, we just got a new website for it's the, the league I started. It's called Graceland Shootout Series. I mean, they, you know, they can see, they can go there and, you know, but Facebook would probably be the best way, you know, Hound Dog yeah. Racing or the Graceland yeah. Shootout page. Right now I'm at 5,000 friends on Facebook, so I can't get any more, but they yeah. can go to either one of those places, you know, if they yeah. got concern or something that they want to say or want me to, you know, encourage them a word, shoot yeah. me a line, I'll be happy to talk to you. Absolutely. Well, darling, in closing, is there anything else that you want to add today? Any inspiration or messages for anybody that you haven't said yet? Uh, I, no, I think we pretty much covered it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think is, so too, because I've it's... Done, I've done a lot of interviews, but I got to say, this is probably the best one I, I feel like I've done. Oh, I mean, you are so amazing, Billy, you know? Well, you, got me, you got me to share more about the... I mean, most of the people that want to talk about the experience just want to go, rush through it a little bit. But I mean... It's hard to do that because it left such a, it changed my life is what it did. And I mean, I, I haven't been the same since. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, I've gotten a close, closer relationship with God because yeah. of it. And I know, I, I don't, I don't, I know he's with me at all times now. You know, even when I was younger and, cra and people say, well, you know, when you was younger, you was crazy. I, but I still believed. I never, one thing about God, he will never leave you. You, now, you may try to leave him, but yeah. he's not going to let you. He's going to call you back, you know, to, uh, come back here, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll, let, I'll let you go a little bit, but I'm pulling you back in now. So, And I, I can agree with that. They're always with us. You know, yeah. I, I have, I've seen angels myself. And, yeah. you know, one of, one of my gifts now is that I actually see spirit guides. And I know from what I experience, they are always with us. You know, right. it's it's only our capacity of not being connected to them. They're always with us regardless of whether we see them or not. So Definitely. thank you so much for for confirming that for the viewers as well. well, well yeah, yeah, I mean, they're always around us. I mean, it's just most of us, we've been trained as little, as, as little kids and stuff like that, you know, I mean, I wish you'd grow up and act more like yourself and, you know, parents are guilty of, you know, Kids see things that we don't, but we discourage it when we when, when it happens to them. And yeah. so they start turning it off, you know, and go, okay, maybe, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, you know. And, yeah. You know, we don't 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 do that, you know. I mean, it's it's been proven they can, you know, children see more things than we do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and they're they're probably yeah. wiser than some of us because and we get to a certain point we feel like, okay, now I've got to start acting like an adult. No, you don't. <laughs> We're how many God's children? Yep. How many so, kids and grandkids have you got, Billy? Let's see. I've got one daughter, and uh, well, I've got actually three daughters and one grandson. So. Okay. And what sort of hope do you give them since you've had this experience? That you, I, you know, I, like in the family I, type I, stuff. I, how do you do? You treat them any differently now, or? I try to be more encouraging. 
you know, uh, one of the things that that I learned from Elvis when I was when I was growing up, and so this I, I applied this when my daughter was growing up. You're only a kid once, you know, so let the kids act like kids. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did until you know my daughter until she told me she was an adult, okay, and I treated her as a kid. I yeah. always encouraged her to act like one. Yeah. Oh. I, I even encourage her today. I mean, I encourage people that I meet, act, bring up your inner child, you know? My yes. inner child wants to play with your inner child, you know? <laughs> you know, go out on a swing set or whatever. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. I, I, I tell, the way I tell people that is, I say, go back to that kid when you were like 12, 16 years old and become that kid again. What were your yeah. dreams? What were your goals? What did you want to do that day? So start doing that again. That's what, yeah. yeah, so that's very much in key with what you're telling and preaching as well. Wow. Well, one, of the, one of the things I always say, my wife and I both say it, is we refuse to grow up, she and I. We're going to yeah. always act like we did when we were teenagers, and if people don't like it, that's their problem. You know, yeah. I mean, we're having a good time. You know, we yeah. don't care. You know? I mean, we'll just pray for you, and, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, you know, everybody just needs to lighten up. I mean, especially in today's yeah. climate, it's just lighten up. Don't look at the news. I mean, both sides of the news, all they're doing, it's like spy versus spy, you know, and, you know, it's both sides are just trying to get the whole world to live in fear. Well, mm. fear is the worst enemy of anything. So yeah. put away that fear and be happy. Look what you got. I mean, instead of looking at what you don't have, look at what you do have and be happy. Oh, you know? You're giving me those tingles again, Billy. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Thank you. you know, you're such an amazing person, you know, and I really would love to talk to you again maybe in a Anytime. month or two, you know, just to hear Anytime. some more messages because I'm, you know, any new information that you get along the way as well because I firmly believe that the more that we do share our stories, the more chances we have of touching the people who do need to hear those stories. You know, I mean, one of the things, and I'm sure it's still going on in your life, since you've had that, I'm sure you've been woke up several times before, too, with a different message. Yeah. Okay. See, once you make that connection, he never stops. He keeps giving you more information and not, not enough to overload you, but just enough to keep, oh, okay, that's why I'm here. Okay, I'll share that. You know, but that, yeah. that's revealed to me that, you know, there's a little bit of God in everybody on this earth. Hmm. And that's why... When we're all sitting there thinking, oh, man, you know, I'm really down and depressed. And next thing you know, somebody comes up and says the exact words that you need to hear. You don't know who that person is. Well, that's yeah. God working in your life right there. He's trying, That's right. He's trying to pass that good word on to you. Go, Don't give up now. Come on. It's going to get better. I promise it's going to get yes. better. And it will. That's you know, exactly I'm, right. Yes. So, you know, he still reveals stuff to me all the time. Oh, yeah. And, that, and that's exactly the purpose why we're still here. You know, we're always on that learning curve of being better tomorrow than we are today, you know, taking it in those little steps. It's all, that's all it takes is little steps forward every day, you know. Oh, my gosh. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to mess if you mess up. Exactly. We're so consumed with making a mistake that we don't, we we're afraid to try anything. Well, put away those fears because all, the worst thing you can do is make a mistake. I mean, if the worst thing you can do is make a mistake, guess what? Some of the best inventions in the whole world were created because of mistakes. So <laughs> you got to keep going. And make, don't be afraid to make the mistakes. I mean, that's yeah. what we learn is making mistakes. So yeah, like I always, I love to say it. My wife, she just shakes her head. I'm going to make some mistakes today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That just means I'm trying, baby. That's it. And that's all we can do, Billy, you know. Wow. Well, darling, it's been amazing talking to you today. Jeez, you know, you've got such energy around you. Yeah, Thank I'd be you. honoured to have you again. So please don't lose my email, you know. No. And um, if, if anyone has liked this today and you're watching, please give it the thumbs up. Please comment if you want, to, if you want me to interview Billy again. Um, because I'm sure that he would like to come back again and have some more chats with me along the way. Yeah. All right, well, on that time, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much again, Billy, for being here today. Okay. Well, let me say, let me do this. Okay, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe and like.
and get to know and get a notification every time Linda does a new video. How about that? Thank you so much, Billy. To everyone okay. watching today, thank you too for being here, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Please stay tuned. There's more coming. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.